the Lord granted him a stern struggle that he might know that wisdom is mightier than all else. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, I invite you this morning to pray with me for the repose of the soul of Roger Pearson, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us first acknowledge our sins and ask God's loving forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Direct your faithful Lord in the way of eternal salvation, which the Bishop St. Apollinaris showed by his teaching and martyrdom, and grant through his intercession that we may so persevere in keeping your commandments as to merit being crowned with him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground right into the sea, walls of water to right and to left of them. The Egyptians gave chase. After them they went right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud, and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us free from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as the day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to the right and to the left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. I sing to the Lord, Glorious his triumph. I will sing to the Lord, glorious his At the breath of your anger, the waters piled high, the moving waters stood up like a dam, the deeps turned solid in the midst of the sea. The enemy said, I will plunder, pursue, and overtake them. 
I will divide the plunder and I shall have my will. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your breath, the sea closed over them. They went down like lead into the mighty waters. You stretched forth your hand, the earth engulfed them. You will lead your people and plant them on your mountain, the place, O Lord, where you have made your home, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have made. Alleluia, alleluia. When anyone obeys what Christ has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was speaking to the crowds when his mother and his brothers appeared. They were standing outside and were anxious to have a word with him. But to the man who told him this, Jesus replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Right at the centre of the story of the Exodus is the dividing of the Red Sea. Not only are the waters divided, but the life of the Hebrews is divided into before and after. Before, they were under a certain slavery. Afterwards, they were ruled not by a human king, but by God alone. They crossed a certain boundary in life in order to allow that to happen. As the Lord says in the Gospel, anyone who does the will of my father is my brother and sister and mother. To cross a boundary from an older, familiar experience into a new and unfamiliar one. In the Old Testament, when making a covenant agreement, the two parties would cut an animal in half and walk in between the two halves. The deal is done. Somebody more modern might less gruesomely shake hands on it, but the principle is the same. It's a matter of honor to uphold the agreement. The Hebrews walk between the walls of water, the first baptism, knowing that God is always leading enhancing nature, fighting our battles. And we know that because we know his tent is pitched among us, that he is leading. He is walking through these waters alongside us, leading us through them and teaching us his word, which he gradually opens for us. The miraculous quality of this event is not really the fundamental point. A miracle is ultimately God's intervention in created nature. St. Augustine called it an acceleration of nature, a miracle. A healing miracle, for example, merely changes something natural, a sickness, into something else natural, a healing. It's just that the motivation for change is of divine origin. The possibility that the sea naturally disappeared, the tide went out, and then quickly, as happens on shallow beaches, reappeared without warning is perfectly acceptable. That itself shows something divine. The Hebrews in their simplicity carrying very little, 
knowing that they are in complete need, wade easily across the mud and sand. The Egyptians, full of their own self-importance, their own inventions, their own chariots and horses, their swords and gold, they sink and they drown. What is divine? God shows his strength in weakness. The Hebrews are the weakest, the most vulnerable, the most wounded, and that's strangely what saves them. They know what matters. The Egyptians, they're strong and full of themselves. They will sink. They put all their gold in their tombs to enjoy on the journey to the afterlife. But crossing that boundary, they would soon realize that there is nothing created that they can take with them on that journey. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Now we don't move from strong to weak, from sinner to saint immediately. Remember, they still wandered around for 40 years afterwards and then had to wait many centuries until the real Moses, the Christ, entered their camp in a perfect way. There's a lot of learning to do in life, a lot of change and growth, and it's non-stop. It's not as if God is wanting us to be weak and wounded, that would be cruel, but rather crossing that boundary, it takes a long time for us to learn that we need to be emptied of ego to be light enough to skit across the water. As Chesterton says, Angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Our Saint Apollinaris is probably obscure in most of our imaginations. He was a disciple of Peter himself who brought him over to Italy when Peter went to Rome. Apollinaris went as bishop to Ravenna, which became a great city later on. He was martyred, it said, four times or they tried to do it three times and succeeded on the fourth time. For all of us, it can take many lessons right up to the end about the necessity of weakness, of holding back nothing. And we might have to learn that lesson many times throughout life. And those lessons are hard, but they're not without purpose. We might only find out that purpose like the Hebrews once we're in the promised land itself, like them, that no doubt terrifying night crossing into the dark unknown. In that night, in our lives, we keep faith that we are indeed being led by God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which Saint Apollinaris overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Apollinaris, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the Lord. Have mercy on us. In the name of God, you take away the sins of the Lord. Have mercy on us. In the name of God, you take away the sins of the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you, you should, should enter, enter my room, room but only, but only say the word, my soul shall be soul healed. Shall be
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Apollinaris faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Frank, take the body of the Lord to our brother Richard, that he may share in this sacred banquet. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. O oh God, eternal shepherd, who govern your flock with unfailing care, Grant in your boundless fatherly love a pastor for your church who will please you by his holiness and to us show watchful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, Our Lady of Walsingham, Saint Felix, all holy martyrs and saints of East Anglia.